Good evening and welcome to Fans of Monsters Personal Reports, where I narrate and discuss some of the cryptid and unexplained sightings and encounters submitted to phantoms and monsters. I also detail current and past investigations on occasion, so thanks for joining me. Uh, Fans of Monsters radio channels made possible by you uh, clicking the subscribe button, sharing, liking, and even commenting. Uh, super chat and super thanks will be open for the show. And the buy me a coffee link and banner are also shown below. So thanks for your consideration. Now, if you're in the chat and have a question, please use all caps. Uh, Vincent will mark each one of them for me and I'll answer them at the end of the narration. So let's start off with a dog man. Um, a Western Massachusetts woman was with friends at a local cemetery and she notices the shadow of something moving. Uh, she investigates and encounters a dog man with human like eyes. So, um, this is what she wrote. Now, I, um, she says, I grew up in a small Western Massachusetts town, and the name of the town was Adams, which is situated below the Berkshires. Uh, it was July 4, 2017. I was working in a cafe in town and had to work during the holiday. So my shift ended around 5 o'clock, and I had plans to go to the Bellevue Cemetery with friends for some peace and quiet. I was tired of all the noise in the day and wasn't interested in fireworks that night. So I uh, met up with everyone outside my house and we picked up some fast food before leaving. There were about five of us and uh, we all started walking down to the cemetery, eating and chatting as we made our way to it. Uh, now the cemetery isn't huge, but it was big enough that we could find a quiet place to sit and hang out for a bit. So after we got there, we were all settled under a tree. I relaxed and just listened while everybody else was talking. I was still reeling from work and how busy the day was for me. That's when I noticed something moving in the distance behind a few mausoleums. Uh, it was dark and I could only make out a shadow. I couldn't tell what I was looking at and figured an animal had come down from the mountain and wandered into town after smelling all their barbecue. Then I saw whatever it was sprint from behind one of the mausoleums to the next. It was way too big to be a wolf or a mountain lion, but too fast to be anything large like a bear. It startled me for a minute, and I could imagine any animal I could think of being out in the light of day like this, so it made me nervous. My friends noticed a change in the look of my face and asked me what was wrong. I, I didn't want to say I saw a big scary shadow running around the cemetery. So I thought they'd make fun of me, so I just shrugged it off and said it was nothing. But I couldn't stop thinking about it, what I had seen. So right then, I saw the figure again. It sprinted back further into the cemetery, this time behind gravestones and then behind a tree. My curiosity got the best of me at this point, and I played it off like I needed to walk. I headed off in the direction of the shadow when I saw it take off again. I noticed it had an unbelievably large head. I, I couldn't tell how tall it was, but I knew it was bigger than any of us, and the quick glance that I got at it reminded me of a man completely covered in hair. I just thought that my mind was playing tricks with me, but I was still curious. So I approached the mausoleum that it had been hiding behind. I looked down to be, to be sure not to trip and froze. There in the dirt was an enormous footprint the size of my forearm and complete with claws right there in the soil. I started to panic, a little puzzled by something I didn't yet understand. I had never heard of a creature with a footprint so big in my whole life. I proceeded with caution toward the tree that it had ducked behind. I just needed to know if I was crazy or if we was actually in danger. I got to the tree and found nothing behind it. Uh, no one was crouching or hiding uh, from us. That's when a cluster of leaves fell from the tree above and hit me on the way down. I heard a loud rustling too. There was no breeze. I slowly lifted my head to look up. There, 
Glaring down at me was a hideous dog creature with eyes shaped like a human, but amber-colored and terrifyingly piercing. This dog creature was as long as the branch it was laying on as it slowly growled at me. I ran back to my friends and told them we had to go immediately. They protested at first, but then one of them caught a glimpse of the creature jumping down from the tree. She didn't get a good look at it, only a shadow, and all she could tell was that it was huge. So we all grabbed our things and made our way out of the cemetery. Now, the friend that had seen the shadow asked me what it was. I played it off saying I didn't see the shadow, only signs of a coyote circling around, and felt scared. I didn't describe the dog creature or acknowledge it. Now, I no longer live in the area and haven't heard of any encounters with the, a dog creature since my encounter. Maybe it went into the mountains and stayed there. Now, I did contact the eyewitness, and I talked to her about the incident. I, I believe she really did see it. Um, the way she described it, it it's typical dog man, uh, you know, what people describe. Uh, it did seem to be bipedal and quadruped, so, uh, you know, we get a lot of those where they do the, you know, they're both, both run on all fours and, and walk upright, so... Um, yeah, and, you know, we, I don't normally get sightings out of Massachusetts, especially cryptids like this, so uh, that was somewhat unusual. Now, we got another one from Massachusetts, where a Boston, Massachusetts couple observed a UFO in the sky outside of their residence. Not long after, a black SUV pulls up in front of their home, and three persons dressed in black appear. Now... This happened in uh, December 6th of last year, 2022, at 2 a.m. Uh, she writes, a couple weeks ago, my sister and her boyfriend were surfing the Internet watching videos on astronauts seeing UFOs and other theories surrounding aliens, such as plane pilots encountering UFOs. My sister is a huge believer in anything paranormal. That must be where I got it from. Now... About four nights ago, my sister and her boyfriend went out to smoke a cigarette around 2.30 a.m. They were looking up at the moon and talking about how these astronauts in the, in the videos they watched weeks ago really had no reason to lie about UFO sightings and how crazy it must be in for them. Within less than five seconds of talking about that out loud, they were peering up in the sky and saw an orb-like bright light so bright that it illuminated their faces as if in the presence of fireworks. It was going upwards in the sky, not in a completely straight path, but it was swerving a little and going upwards. There were a few spark-like elements coming from the bottom of the craft, and the craft itself was visible for about three seconds before it completely disappeared. Now, the, uh, it was completely silent and appeared pretty close. Way too close to be a plane or some type of shooting star. They thought it could have been a comet, but also too close to be that. Or a meteor landing on Earth, but it was traveling upward and also disappeared. Now, my sister said the size of it was about the size of a street light from the ground's point of view, but she couldn't make out the shape of the object because it was so bright. Now, it was close to them that they narrowed it down to being a UFO. So both she and her boyfriend saw it, which means one of them wasn't hallucinating. They were scared, considering the fact that just seconds before the UFO appeared, they were talking about alien encounters. Um, they felt as if whatever it was heard them talking about that and wanted to prove their existence. It was more than just a coincidence. Now, they went inside afterwards stunned, not believing or knowing exactly what they saw. Now, my sister admitted to me that she thought it was cool to finally see a UFO for the first time. Now, after about 45 minutes, her boyfriend wanted another cigarette, and as hesitant as they were to go back outside, they went anyway. Now, after about two minutes of being outside, the second time, a black sedan SUV pulled up across the street seemingly out of nowhere with absolutely no sound. 
a man in all black came out and opened the trunk of the SUV, turned around, and began to stare at them. They could tell he was dressed in black but couldn't make out his face. Within seconds of this, she and her boyfriend noticed two other men in black standing at the end of the street, one house down from where they lived, kind of swaying back and forth as if they were trying to make out who or what they were. It seemed as if they were more intrigued by seeing my sister and her boyfriend than they were to see them, they, you know, more than they were seeing these men in black. Now, my sister described them as also wearing all black attire and couldn't see their faces or even their skin color despite being only one house down from where they were standing. Now, they were all blurred out and did not have distinct facial features. It's also, it was also about 3 o'clock. 30 a.m. at this point. Now, these men in black were talking to each other, smoking or doing anything that, that may, you know, they weren't talking or, excuse me, these men in black weren't talking to each other, smoking or doing anything that made sense. They were just staring at them, as was the guy with the, the trunk open in the SUV across the street. She said it gave her a very fearful, ominous impression. Now, as soon as that happened, she grabbed her boyfriend's hand and sprinted inside the house, fearing that if if she wasn't physically touch wasn't physically touching him, he could have mysteriously disappeared somewhere behind her as they were running. Uh, she has not been able to sleep, turn off any lights, and doesn't feel safe being alone. Now, she tried contacting the police authorities. But they basically told her they only take crime reports and not UFO reports. Now, my sister said this is the scariest thing she's ever encountered, and UFO sighting was scary enough, but the strange MIB who just so happened to be staring at them so late in the middle of the night were even more terrifying. Um, now, people have asked her why she didn't record the men with her phone, and she said that she was too scared to stick around to find out what, was, what would happen if she did. So, uh, what was the strange UFO she spotted in the sky with her boyfriend? And uh, who were the men in black who happened to appear in the same area within less than an hour? Now, this is a report that was submitted to New Fork. So, I don't have any contact. I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, and I'll, if you have questions about men in black, I'll ask them. I'll answer them after I'm done doing the narrating. But this is what they do. They just suddenly show up for whatever reason. Like, like I've said before, I, I, I think the men in black are the cleanup crew for aliens, quite frankly. I don't think there's any government um, any government involvement at all. I think that, you know, when something happens that and somebody sees something that shouldn't have been seen, that they're there to try to dispel anything or try to get them from making a report. So this next report, and of course, you know, I wrote, I read something about a sighting by a Chicago firemen at O'Hare International at their fire station um, about two weeks ago. So at that time, Manuel was talking about some of the other firemen that were at that station, mentioning that they had seen this, what they called the O'Hare Batman at the location. So, um, this uh, this report that he the next report that he he put out was uh, the Chicago City Fireman at O'Hare Station Three took one of the engines to get fueled. As they were approaching the fire station on their way back, they observed an eight foot tall red eyed Batman shuffle across the road. Now, of course, Manuel, who's a member of Fam's Monster Fortune Research, posted this on his website UFO Clearinghouse as well. So this is what they uh, this is what they uh, wrote to um, to Manuel, uh, the the witness who contacted him. I was at work at Station Three at about uh, two forty five hundred hours. Uh, as part of the normal routine, we take the engines to get fueled at the maintenance yard. It's about a two miles or so one way, and the entire endeavor takes about forty five to sixty minutes, depending if you know on if you have to wait. Now, as we were headed back, we were approaching the firehouse when we saw something move across the street. It walked in a sort of shuffle as we approached. We saw two glowing red eyes that looked right at us and then disappeared. 
As we continued the approach of locations, our headlights fell upon a large black figure that looked like a man wearing black clothing, except he was at least eight foot tall, super thin, and had a large pair of bat-like wings. It took off into the air and was gone within a second or two, and we lost it in the night sky. It scared the living hell out of everyone in the engine, and then we got back to the firehouse. We all went outside to look for it, but found nothing. It was the damnest thing I'd ever seen in my life. Now, this was the same station where they had seen this thing. The witness had seen it across the street on top of the, uh, the HVAC building at O'Hare. So, um, now, Manuel notes that this is part of the ongoing investigation looking into initial report of Chicago firefighters citing a winged humanoid at Chicago O'Hare International Airport. Now, the witness was able to convey sightings from fellow firefighters at this station that were told to him the night of this sighting. They were being presented separately, and attempts are being made to contact the original witness of each report. Now, as the investigation progresses, we'll make updates and, and pass along to uh, fans and monsters. So, a couple days later... We had Chicago firemen posted the O'Hara Fire Station number two. This is about a mile north of station number three. They came forward to describe a sighting of a screeching and chirping orange-eyed winged humanoid flying over the location. Now, the report states, I was filling in at O'Hara Fire Station 2 on July 4th, 2022 weekend. We were outside the patio area talking and watching the distant firework display. As we talked, we heard what sounded like a very loud screeching noise. It sounded like the brakes on a large truck. We didn't pay it any mind because it was probably a semi or an airport maintenance vehicle that was nearby. There is a cargo terminal within sight of the station, so we didn't give it a second thought until we heard a series of clicks. Rapid, loud clicking followed by that sound again. It was then that one of the other guys saw something and said, What the F is that? We looked up to see a figure in the sky. It looked like a human with wings and had a pair of bright orange eyes. One of the firefighters said it was the infamous Batman and said it was seen all over the airport and surrounding suburbs. It was only visible for about five seconds before it flew out of sight towards the north. Now, Manuel also states again, this is part of the investigation. And um, I think we're going to have some more. Now, I got a, um, I, I had, it, it's interesting because these things always seem to come in groups. Even when they're old sightings, people, I guess people see them. And they recall something that they've experienced. But I, I got a report the other day I posted from Waukegan. And we've had sightings up there. That's north of Chicago. And uh, I got another one today west of Chicago that I'm looking into. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure we're going to be getting more. This is just the way it seems to work. You know, we'll have a lull for months at a time and all of a sudden it starts it starts up again uh it doesn't matter if it's at the airport or out in the suburbs or in somewhere else in the city but this is just the way you know it seems to happen so this next account was actually transcribed from cryptic canada the lady who runs that, that youtube channel she's been using something my um uh, some of my uh, material so uh, I actually saw this one she had posted about a year and a half ago, and it caught my interest because, you know, it's kind of weird, and, uh, you know, I like the weird stuff. So anyway, a woman and her sister rented a cottage in the woodland uh, woodlands of northern Michigan, and uh, then they then encounter a neighbor with a creepy son. Soon afterward, there are two encounters with an unknown Canine. So here's the way the story goes. I decided to rent a cabin way up in northern Michigan for a week with my sister Tanya. My sister is a writer, and this was also what she needed because she hadn't written in two weeks. So off we went. 
It was late May and still quite chilly, but we didn't care about the weather because we weren't there for sunbathing on the beach. Now, the cottage was rustic, but recently redone. It was located on a small pond, but was surrounded by thick woods. Our cottage was the last one down a long dirt road. The cottage owner had put in several really nice long trails because it, if not, then nobody was enjoying the woods. So the first day we were unloading our luggage from the car and a young guy and his mom walked up the driveway. They introduced themselves and said they owned the house a little way down the road and they went for walks a few times a week for exercise past the cottage. The mother's name was Linda. She mentioned that her husband had passed away a few years earlier. And of course, I told her that I lost my husband just a few months earlier as well. So Linda looked so sad for me, looked so sad for me, but her son Brendan had a smirk on his face, which really creeped me out. Linda also seemed to notice this as well and said, "Okay, let's leave these ladies to unpack." And then they said their goodbyes. Now I was unnerved by the way Brendan looked at me, and I noticed he kept looking back at me as they walked away. So, on the first day, we just hung out around the cabin. The next day, I went for a walk alone so Tanya could get some writing done. I chose the path the owner said was the easiest. I had been walking for about 10 minutes when I heard the sound of a small animal moving through the underbrush, maybe something the size of a rabbit. So, I stopped to listen, and when I stopped, the rustling stopped. I happened to glance back and I saw the shape of a human standing behind the thicket. I thought it was Brandon, so I turned and kept walking. I was almost halfway and I'd see a tree about 30 feet in front of me, but completely surrounded by the same type of thicket. I saw what again I perceived to be a naked Brandon. I couldn't see clearly because it was shrouded in darkness, but I saw him perched on the bottom limb of a tree, just crouched there staring at me. I could see one hand holding the limb he was crouched on and the other arm was wrapped around the tree trunk. But now that I'd looked back and I know what I was looking at, I can't believe I thought it was Brandon. A day or two later, I was finally able to pull Tanya away from her laptop and we were on the porch to watch the sunset. We distinctly heard a wolf howl from the, at least the other side of the pond. We agreed it was really close, but we weren't too worried. We were more worried about the, the mother bears as we were just told by Linda and the cabin owner that we needed to keep bear spray on us at all times. Call the cubs were very young and the mother was really protective. So about 10 minutes later, we heard an animal screaming. W oh my gosh, both of us were saying and covering our ears. Tanya was saying this is just too close to nature for me. And she w went in to use the bathroom and then she came back and she said, what is that? And pointed to the woodlawn. I saw the shrub shaking, then an animal came out of the woods with a baby deer hanging from its mouth. The baby wasn't just a newborn, it, I, we looked at pictures showing various ages and it was probably two weeks old, approximately. We're not country girls, so please don't get on me for being wrong. Anyway, Tanya said, no, I don't want to see this, and she went inside. I sat looking at the animal. I was uh, fairly certain the fawn was already dead or I would have done something at least that I think I would have done something about it. I don't know. But regardless, I was trying to figure out what this animal was. It was walking into the open from the woods. It dropped the fawn from its mouth. Then it started sniffing it. I was fairly certain that this was a very large wolf with a case of mange because its hair was thick around the neck like a lion's mane, and it was thin to barren spots. Its rear end was bald, and I didn't see a tail. I noticed it looked almost deformed because the back end set way lower than the front. Now, the animal seemed almost mesmerized by the fawn. It stared and sniffed at it, then it pushed it forward 
or over by using its nose. Then it picked up, picked it up by the mouth and started shaking it side to side viciously. And it started biting into the midsection, and when it lifted its head to chew, you could clearly see the intestines hanging out of its mouth. Now I believe I let out a sound at that point because it looked at me surprised and then ran about 10 foot to a large tree. It turned around and literally stood on its back legs. I realized that this was the thing I saw in the tree. I could clearly see the eyes were rusty colored and they were illuminated. They were glowing from the inside. Starting to turn dusk, I just continued to stand there. It just continued to stand there behind that tree. It seemed to be apprehensive a little, but it was staring at me and then it would look towards the fawn. At one point, I thought I saw it lift its lip and the whole muzzle started to vibrate like it was trying not to bear its teeth. Finally, it got down on all four feet and started walking slowly to the fawn. Then it was almost there. It swung its head in my direction and let out a low, menacing growl. At the same time, it bared its teeth. This animal was at least 400 pounds. It could be even bigger, but I'm afraid that the naysayers would call me a liar. This animal is at least three to four times as big as a German Shepherd. All the way around its head was huge. But what really terrified me was when it sneered at me and went down for the fawn. Its teeth were at least three inches long, sharp, and jagged. When it got to the fawn, it picked it up in its mouth and took off in a fast slope. We didn't leave for walks after that. We barely left the cabin. When we did leave the last day, we drove over to that tree, and I got out and stood beside where it stood. And I can say without a doubt it was well over six and a half to seven foot in height. We drove past Linda's house and on a second thought I asked Tanya to turn back around. I wanted to tell them what we saw. Now, Linda was genuinely concerned and seemed shocked to hear what we saw. She appreciated that we thought enough to stop. When we got home, I called the landlord and he said straight away that you were warned to carry bear spray. So I just left it at that. I figured he thought we wanted our money back, and that just wasn't the case, so that's our story. I'm pretty sure it wasn't a Bigfoot. <laughs> so anyway, um, so when I, I, I listened to this, my first thought was it could have been a case of lycanthropy since she had originally thought the first encounter with the beast was actually Brandon. And, uh, you know, was this a shapeshifter or was it just the wolf of mange? Uh, it did stand by Peely at one point. Um, could have been a cryptic canine, even a dog man. So, I don't know. But, uh, you know, I've heard strange things, and that that's that's about as strange as it gets. But, you know, these lycanthropy stories kind of raise their ugly head every once in a while. And this could have very well been it. So, um this last account, a Pennsylvania couple had a credible sighting of a Bigfoot in October 2022 while biking on Ghost Town Trails in Cambria County. Uh, the BFRO had also classified this as a Class A sighting. Now, the witness actually contacted me to tell me about this. and She had mentioned that she had actually talked to Matt Moneymaker about this sighting. I don't know if he went out there or not. But anyway, on um, October 5th, 2022, my boyfriend and I were biking on Ghost Town Trails near Ebensburg, Pennsylvania. Now, as we came around a bend, we were looking straight ahead when we saw a huge, dark figure on the right side of the trail. We looked at it. It was looking straight at us. It turned and stepped into the woods. Now, we couldn't see the face clearly because of the distance. My boyfriend is 6'5", and it was much bigger than him. As it stepped off the trail, there was a huge distance between its legs. We finally stopped down the trail and were saying we couldn't believe what we saw. We were biking fast. We went back to look for the tracks, etc., but didn't see any as there were so many leaves at that time. Now, my bike 
We biked there every day and looked for more tracks and signs. There were no signs or smells, sounds or smells. There was, that was the coolest thing I've ever experienced. She said, I went to a uh, Stan Gordon talk a couple weeks ago. Very interesting. Uh, we live in, Pen live in Pennsylvania, so our bike riding will be on hold because of the ice and snow and cold. Uh, like I said before, th there was a full report uh, made by Matt Moneymaker. So if you want to go and look at the, his report and his thoughts on it, you can find it on BFRO. Again, it's um, Ghost Town Trails, Cambria County, Pennsylvania, Class A sighting. So it was an interesting sighting. And, uh, you know, we've been getting some pretty interesting sightings in Pennsylvania lately. So, folks, you got any questions, put them up there, and uh, we'll see what uh, I'll see if I can answer them for you. Oh, let's see. Nancy Malcolm, question. Do any hunters use dog whistles when hunting dog man? Thought of this when there was no sound the first, different vibration, different hearing options. You know, I don't know one person who actually goes out hunting for those things, to be quite honest with you. Um... But I know Butch didn't. <laughs> I don't know if I would. Uh, if I was at a distance to where I thought it would be, I don't know if I'd use that or not. But um, I, I, you, you would almost have to have something that you know it sounded like or a call, or you're just going to get nothing. I mean, this thing isn't going to show up. Um, I don't know. But I have never heard of that. Maybe somebody else has heard of that using a whistle or when hunting. Or when looking for these things. Stuart Carey, could the dog man possibly be a type of Bigfoot? You know, we've thought about that. I have thought about that. Uh, we've had Bigfoot sightings where they look like they did have a bit of a snout on them. Uh, I think some people may very well misidentify a dog man or for Bigfoot and vice versa. I think it's very possible. I, I talked to Stan about this, and I think he believes the same thing. Uh, but yeah, it could definitely be a, a type of Bigfoot. Absolutely. Martha Snyder, Marla Snyder asked, do you think there is an attraction to the fire stations for some reason? You're talking about O'Hara. Uh, I don't know. You know, these guys are there all the time, so they're going to see stuff. Uh, you know, there are other employees that are at the airport all the time. And in fact, we're, we're, we're starting to possibly, we may possibly be getting some reports coming out of the terminal and the baggage area soon too. So people who are at the airport or are working at the airport are seeing these things. Um, so, you know, if these firemen, and of course they're out there at, at all hours, you know, when they run their shifts, some of them are there at the stage for days. Uh, I, I think it's very possible that they would see them more so than other people would. But, uh, yeah, I, no, I, I don't think there's an attraction to the fire station itself. I just think that they're, it's, it's, a, it's an opportunity for them to see them. Jose Sanchez, first time I heard about the MIB faces being blurred out. Very strange. It does, it does happen. I have um, had some old reports where people have actually been interviewed by these men in black. Most of the time when they're, they see their faces or they see their hands, they're, they're kind of an olive skin color. But I've had people actually tell me that when they have been interviewed, that their faces would sometimes look like they're glitching out. I don't understand that, but... I have had people tell me that maybe that's what this, maybe this happened, you know, in this instance, but I have heard that, uh, that would get me thinking more along the lines that maybe they're shapeshifters or alien beings or something, uh, otherworldly beings. So, um, who knows? Tommy Cooper, have you ever heard of a dog man hypnotizing you? Well, there have been instances when people have felt like they're in a trance in the, in, in, when they're in front of a dog man or an upright canine. 
Uh, I've heard a couple hunters tell us that that have been armed. I, I guess as a defense mechanism to try to dispel them have having not having any idea taking a, a shot at them. Um, I don't know. I don't know, but I I I, I have heard plenty of instances with dog and with Bigfoot, uh, even with. Um, winged humanoids where people have um, seemed to have been in a trance or have been transfixed by it. Um, I'm not necessarily saying there's mind speak involved, but I think, I think there is, um, I think they can be put in some type of trance. Uh, Mary 18, any ideas of what the Mothman may want with this area? Could it be something to do with the Lake Naval Base Airport? Well, that's the that's the sixty eight thousand dollar question. I mean, what are they doing there? I think the airport. I think there's something to do with the, uh, the cemetery at the airport. Uh, I think there's. I think these are portal travelers. I think these they move within uh, dimensions, and I think that 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 particular cemetery, Rust Haven Cemetery, on the west side in the cargo areas. Is, is a point of entry for the most part for a lot of these sightings at the airport. But it could be for a lot of the sightings throughout that part of the city, too, and, and, you know, that western part of the city and out in the suburbs. I, I've always said that I believe that we're not dealing with just one being. I mean, we're, I think we're dealing with several beings. And could they be coming in from multiple portals or could they be manifesting somehow? Yeah, Absolutely. It's still an enigma to us. I mean, you know, we, we have theories, but quite frankly, that's exactly what they are, just theories at this point in time. And, um, you know, by us taking reports and, and looking into each one of them, you know, there's going to be little vari variations, and maybe at one point we're going to get a, a decent answer out of that. This goes to BC. High Lawn, have there been accounts of crawler rake prints, footprints? Thanks. You know, I have thought about that. Of course, I wrote that book about it, about the meme humanoids. I, I don't ever recall anybody mentioning footprints. And that is strange. Um. <clears throat> You know, we don't get much physical evidence from any cryptids anyway. And with these crawlers, we get very little, if any. But footprints? No. You know, I've had people say that they've seen them in trees and they break branches. And, you know, so they're physical beings, I'm quite sure. But is there, I mean, are, there, are they leaving footprints? I don't have, I haven't had anybody tell me that they've seen them. Good question, though. Uh, Tamara0142, do you think the glowing eyes make these dogmen paranormal? Yeah. Yeah, I think they're supernatural. I think most cryptids are. Now, when I say supernatural, I mean either ultra-terrestrial or they've got some type of supernatural aspect to them that causes the illuminating eyes, the forward illuminating illumination coming from the eyes. It's, it's not a reflection or anything. It, it's actually, you know, it's actually light exuding from these eyes. You know, when I had my encounter back at Camp Conawaga with the winged humanoid, that that red light was coming out of the eyes. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't any type of um, reflection because it was so dark. There was no light on the eyes anyway. And, um... You know, we hear that all the time. It doesn't have to be a red-eyed being. They're, you know, the dog man most of the time, they're amber or golden or yellow-eyed. And, um, yeah, I don't think it's reflection with them. I think I, I think they have some ability to actually exude the light, uh, almost like little spotlights. So, yeah, it makes. I think it makes them supernatural. Thanks for the question. Anything else, folks? Well, I want to thank you all for coming in tonight and spending some time with me. 
Uh, if you have an unexplained encounter sighting, feel free to contact me through the Fams of Monsters blog site. If you made a donation, I, I very much appreciate it. Um, you know, please like, subscribe, and share. You're what makes this all possible. And uh, you can always contact me at Lon Strickler, phantomsandmonsters.com. So, later tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central, Vincent Richardson's V Show uh, will be coming on. And he will be discussing secret societies and alien occult practices. And uh, Dennis Carroll will be his guest tonight. Should be interesting. Then this Friday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, I'll be joined by some of the Phantoms of Monsters 14 research team for an update. And my guests will include uh, Carter Bouchard, uh, Thomas Carroll, and Chad Redding. And the discussion should be quite lively because we got a few things we're going to be talking about. Uh, and, you, know, you have to come on and, and listen because we've got some commentary we're going to be be making about a few things that have been going on within the uh, the cryptid and paranormal world. So um, make sure you tune in for that Friday night. And then after that, we'll be followed by Bernadette McDaniels of Paranormal Life at 11 p.m. Eastern. Her guest will be Duke Sullivan, the host of World Bigfoot News. So uh, you Bigfoot enthusiasts, make sure you turn in for that. So until then, stay healthy and have a safe, enjoyable weekend or week. Good night.